Okay. In September 1776, George Washington, who had just been kicked off the island of Manhattan, asked for volunteers to spy behind the British lines. And a 21-year-old, just about the same age as Bradley Manning, stepped forward. His name was Nathan Hale, and he went beyond those lines, made notes on the British movements, was caught by the British as he was trying to return, and hanged as an illegal combatant, which a lot of us may end up being labeled uh, before we're through here, and a traitor. Was he a patriot or a traitor? Well, he was both. He was a patriot to the new democracy that was being born by his efforts and a lot of other efforts. He was a traitor to George III. All of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were liable to be hanged as traitors having been loyal subjects of George III in 1774 and traitors in 1775 and 76, having discovered a new loyalty to the principles that are enshrined in our Constitution and as amended in the Bill of Rights and later with the ending of slavery, the empowerment of women, and so forth. So. If he, if Bradley Manning is executed, as in the charges that Obama's prosecutors have brought against him now, facing him, they say they're not going to ask for execution, but with the charge, the ridiculous charge of aiding the enemy, life imprisonment or execution is part of that, and the presiding authorities could overrule the recommendation and give it to him. Nathan Hale was the first American to be executed for giving secrets to Americans. Bradley Manning could be the second. No. Nathan Hale said just before he was hanged, I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. And entered our history with that statement. Bradley Manning said, according to chat logs, which it's up to the prosecution to prove are admissible as evidence, to prove that he was the person writing them, and they have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. But I don't have to. I give him credit for what is said in those chat logs and for what he said he did. Uh, and so, on that basis, I was very impressed to read that he had said, I'm prepared to go to prison for life or even be executed. This is facing him. I'm sure his feeling is, if he is put in prison for life, or for very long term, uh, he will not regret it any more than the people who resisted the draft in Vietnam and went to prison for it. I've never met one who regretted that uh, so far. I was facing... I was facing a life sentence, 115 years, and if I'd gotten out a couple years ago with good behavior, which some people think I might not have, not have earned in prison, uh, I'm sure that like these other colleagues of mine, I would not have regretted that. What can one person do? Well, they can't end a war by themselves. They can't change the regime as we need a changing of this regime in this country. They can't do it by themselves. It takes a lot of people in that chain, some inspired by others. Courage is contagious, and they can pass it on. But can one person make a difference? I would say that without, and I'm giving him credit here, without Bradley Manning, having released the cables through WikiLeaks that inspired the uprisings uh, in Tunisia, along with the self-sacrifice of a Tunisian named Mohamed Bouazizi, who burned himself to death in protest against the oppression there. Without either of those individuals, then Ali, our dictator there that we were supporting, would still be there, and Mubarak would still be in Egypt, uh, oppressing them. So one, can, uh, one person can make a difference, especially with this truth-telling. The difference we need to make is the same difference that Nathan Hale uh, was facing. We have to free ourselves from a monarchy, not just from one monarch, and from an empire. After all, the empire that we were confronting, we Americans were confronting at that time, was the most mighty in the world, the most liberal empire in the world probably at that time, uh, spoke the same language that we did, which is different from some of our imperial operations right now. I could ask, how many people in this audience, this very select audience, believe you know the two main languages of Afghanistan? Can I see hands? I see about four. 
I hope they're right. I'll tell you the answer. The two languages are Dari, which is Eastern Farsi or Persian, and Pashto. And the reason I ask that is that I remember that in Vietnam, none of us spoke the language, but we knew the language we didn't speak, that it was Vietnamese. We're fighting in a country now where we don't know the language we don't know. We don't know what dictionary to get uh, if we were to do it. It's absolutely the same would be true right now. Uh, I'm afraid in uh, Libya we'd know the language, we wouldn't speak it. We'd be interfering in a war there where we would make things worse for the people and for ourselves than now. The two main attributes of monarchy that were being fought 235 years ago First, the ability to put someone in a dungeon and forget them. The French call that an oubliette, from the verb to forget. A dungeon where the captors just put someone to forget them. We haven't had uh, no king of England since John I has made the claim that this president has made, that he can detain someone even without charges or even having been acquitted forever, indefinitely, an end to habeas corpus, a claim, as I say, that the, the British kings haven't made for 800 years. The main attribute, the worst attribute of monarchy, for a, an executive, for a king, to be able to declare a war without parliament, without popular will, uh, on his own say-so. If we go into Libya, as Harry Truman went into Korea, without congressional action, again, we'll be supporting that monarchical uh, concept. Right now, the person who, sleep, who sits in the Oval Office believes he's in a throne room. And that will be true as long as we let him or her someday believe that, that they're wearing a crown on their head. It's up to us to knock that off, the head of the uh, head of the Oval Office. The people, the people in Tahrir Square, one of the groups in there who had been fighting Mubarak for some time, called itself Kafaya. Enough. Enough. Well, we need an enough movement in this, enough to empire, enough to imperial wars, enough to oubliettes. The Lakota Sioux had a saying before they went into battle, come brothers, this is a good day to die. Right. Well, this is a good day to get arrested at the White House and uh, tomorrow at Quantico. So thanks for being here.